A while back on Instagram, I ran a poll of Vacheron Constantin's latest overseas perpetual calendar ultra thin in 18 karat white gold versus Audemars Piguet's latest Royal Oak perpetual calendar USA exclusive in titanium. And out of 300 votes, Vacheron Constantin came out on top. I did a few more polls for fun with the tides turning back and forth between VC and AP for their excellent take on the perpetual calendar package. And I eventually landed on a question, if money wasn't an option, which Vacheron Constantin overseas would you choose between the ultra thin perpetual calendar or the standard three hands with date? And that one was obviously too easy because out of 200 people, including myself, we all said the perpetual calendar, duh. Anyways, today I'm excited to show you the Vacheron Constantin Overseas Perpetual Calendar Ultra Thin and just like the six-sided Maltese cross bezel, answer the six questions who, what, where, when, how, and why of this piece and also include some references to other watches in the same category to give more perspective on how this piece lands. And real quick, you might notice some new differences on our channel. This channel now changed to the Minutemon, which is now presented by Carrot Co, a luxury watch and jewelry authorized retailer located in Flushing, Queens, New York. And thumbs up this video if you enjoy it. Our store, Carrot Co, is an authorized retailer for Vacheron Constantin and 25 plus other luxury watch brands, which you can see on our website and in the links below. Now, let's oversee this review. The first question is, when did the Overseas launch? To talk about the Overseas collection, which relaunched in 2016, I got to go in-depth to its design inspiration. Now, the Overseas is a luxury sports watch collection offered by Vacheron Constantin, and since its inception in 1977, it has been a main competitor to other luxury sport watches launched in the 70s, such as the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak and the Patek Philippe Nautilus. Now, both the Royal Oak and the Nautilus were penned by the famous watch designer Joe Genta. However, Vacheron, the oldest of the Holy Trinity brands, starting back from 1755, rested its future on a then 25-year-old anti-conformist watch designer George Hysek to develop their own high-end sports watch. The result of George Hysek's work was the legendary sports watch reference 222. And this codename 222 was created because this collection was created in 1977 or the brand's 222nd anniversary since 1755. It was proudly showing that its experience as a protector of Geneva fine watchmaking was not going to be bested by this growing luxury sports watch demand. That means it also features a monoblock steel tunnel shaped case, but now with the Maltese cross details, porthole style screw held bezel to provide a water resistance of up to 120 meters and an integrated tapered bracelet, all aspects that the other brands had. Today, the third generation overseas, which relaunched in 2016, takes inspiration from the precursor 222 and adapts its form and function for the modern day. And the version 4300V perpetual calendar represents one of the brand's highest calendar complications in a super ultra thin package. Now let's answer one of the biggest questions first. How does the Overseas Perpetual Calendar Ultra Thin wear on the wrist? Well, it wears extremely well. Even better than the standard 41 millimeter Overseas Three Hands with Date, the 4500 V series. And I say that because with this ultra thin case, the watch has a larger dimension at 41.5 millimeters, but it's much thinner at 8.1 millimeters, which is about three millimeters of a difference. And you can immediately feel that when the watch is on your wrist. The 8.1 millimeter thin case hugs my slim 6.4 inch wrist close. And unlike the standard overseas, the advantage of the ultra thin case is that it's designed to taper straight down, resulting in a snug fit for someone with a slim wrist like me. This makes a huge difference in the wear of the ultra thin case because the lug to lug is closer to what I would say 50 millimeters instead of the end link to end link from the flare of the bracelet to 56 millimeters. So that's an additional six millimeters of room of fit. And that's why I wish that the standard overseas had an ultra thin version as well. The warm 18 karat 5N rose gold case of the 4300V features a mix of brush, satin, and high polished finishing throughout the entire case. The front facing side of the case features vertical brush finishing, which blends nicely into that porthole Maltese cross bezel with brush finishing following the natural circular motion of the bezel topped with high polish to make that Maltese cross symbolism really stand out. And like I mentioned earlier, the third generation overseas features a Maltese cross bezel with six notches on top 
actually 12 if you count the space in between each notch, which ultimately balances the design extremely well since each notch is perfectly positioned at every hour marker. And I love that VC did that because it's just like their tagline, do better if possible, and that is always possible. The sides of the case have four recessed pusher points to adjust the month, day, date, and moon phase, and the crown is proportional to the ultra-thin case and has a nice grooved edge, making it easy for time setting. And the top of the crown is also nicely decorated with the Maltese cross. Now, compared to the 15 bar water resistance of the standard overseas, the ultra-thin cases have a water resistance of five bar with no screw down crown, However, it is still three times more anti-magnetic than most watch standards. Now, as we go into the dial through the porthole bezel and scratch-proof sapphire crystal, we get to behold the showstopper of the watch. First question you might be asking, is the blue dial on the perpetual calendar the same as the blue dial on the 4500V? Well, in this side-by-side, -side, you can see the same vibrant deep lacquer shade of blue surrounding the dial. And what's interesting is that using a mix of warm rose gold for the case and a cool deep blue dial creates this vibrant color play on the watch. Now, the dial has a lot of lines, but everything is organized neatly where it's meant to be understood in a glance. Starting at the outside of the dial, it is the same deep blue chapter ring denoting the minute track, and every five minutes it's featured and easy to read. Now, when you compare this to the standard overseas, the minute track text is slightly larger, most likely to be easier to be read against the multi-complication of the dial. Now, as we go into the dial, there is a continuation of the minute markings, but now surrounded between the 12 rose gold applied hour markers with the 12 o'clock hour marker being the shortest, giving it a distinct look compared to the other hour markers. Now, right underneath the 12 o'clock is a month indicator and it's featured only every four months with two small white lines between every written month to denote the unwritten months. Since this is a perpetual calendar that does not need to be adjusted until the year 2100, the direction of the month indicator also portrays the leap year in baby blue. Wait, hold up. So if you, didn't, if you don't know what a perpetual calendar is, let me explain it real quick. The function of a perpetual calendar is being able to properly adjust for 30, 31 days for every month and knowing leap years such as 28 or 29 days in February. So essentially, if you have this watch running every day, let's say on a watch winder and you're wearing it, you will never have to set the time or date until the year 2100. And having a perpetual calendar is definitely an elevated experience from a standard date window, an example of ultra high watchmaking and luxury to have a mechanical watch that can properly adjust for every day, date, month, year, and moon phase position. It's not an easy complication to do a perpetual calendar, let alone an ultra thin version of it that we see here today. The two subdials across each other in the center read the day and date, and down at six o'clock is a golden moon phase disc on a deep blue midnight sky with golden stars. Just underneath the moon phase is the Maltese cross followed by Vacheron Constantin's Geneva text. And to read the time, you simply look at the hour and minute sword hands that are bifaceted, finished, and filled with blue superluminova. You'll notice that the dial has no visible moving parts, such as the seconds hands, as a standard central seconds hand would have added thickness to this ultra thin watch. However, it was very smart of Vacheron Constantin to add this beautiful translucent deep blue dial surrounded by the sheen of the 18K rose gold case because that adds a lot of life and presence to the watch. So without needing to be ticking to getting your attention, most of the dancing of the dial is done off the high polishing deep blue dial and a stunning bezel design. The entire dial features a lot of information, but everything is organized and easy to understand. However, in my opinion, the most important information is simply the time and date, which then begs the question, why a perpetual calendar in a sports watch? I always thought of the overseas to be a sporty dress watch or a dressy sports watch. It's able to adapt to any attire thanks to its interchangeability from bracelet to straps without any tools. And now while other luxury sport watches limit you to wearing it or people perceiving the watch only on its native bracelet, the overseas interchangeability gives it its advantage by allowing the wearer to choose how to dress the watch instead of the watch dressing you. So instead of wearing it only on a bracelet, now you can sport a matching blue alligator strap or blue rubber strap. And it's the one watch collection you'd ever need to go from beach to boardroom. So what's not to love about adding a high complication to perpetual calendar, traditionally a complication seen on a dress watch in a sport luxury watch package. Now, how does Vacheron Constantin make this case so thin? Thanks to the insanely thin 4.01 millimeter full automatic winding movement caliber 1120 QP1, QP, which is abbreviated for Quantium Perpetual, 
The case can also slim down to 8.1 millimeters. And the Caliber 1120 QP1 has an exceptionally high level of Geneva hand finishing visible through the sapphire crystal case back and a 22 karat solid rose gold rotor featuring the wind rose symbol, another motif of travel. And you can see the beautiful Geneva seal proudly located on the case back to denote that this was passed as a true example of Geneva fine watchmaking, judged by the canton of Geneva itself. Now those who are in love with ultra thin movements just like myself might recognize that the Caliber 1120 QP1 is actually based off the legendary JLC Caliber 920, which has also been used in few models of the AP Royal Oak and the Patek Philippe Nautilus. Now the JLC Caliber 920 is the most significant automatic ultra thin calibers with its full size rotor ever created and sold in a Bosch form to all three Holy Trinity brands. All three of these brands would go and purchase this movement and like in this scenario, Vacheron Constantin would add the Maison's own personal touch, high level Geneva traditional hand finishing and complications. So aside from its thinness, the Caliber 1120 QP1 movement features a free sprung balance. It beats at a rate of 19,800 VPH, which is a slower rate than the standard 28,800 VPH that we're used to, and holds a power reserve of 40 hours, and has a highly innovative bi-directional rotor, which you'll notice is visibly attached by the four screws towards the outside of the 22 karat rotor. The slower beat rate is another clever arrangement to allow the watch to keep 40 hours and thin at the same time. Finally, who is this watch for? Because the current MSRP of 88,500 for the current reference I'm showing you on the strap or $97,000 on the bracelet, it's just under a six figure watch price point. So obviously who is this watch designed for comes to mind? Well, it's, it's quite simple, it's, uh, it's for me. No, I'm just kidding. But it is a drool worthy grail watch high on my list that I hope to own one day. In summary though, this is Vacheron Constantin's high complicated ultra thin perpetual calendar sports watch with a high level complication and beautiful construction. It doesn't really need much more explaining outside of that. Now out of the entire collection of the perpetual calendar overseas ultra thin, my favorite version has to be this year's 2021 white gold version with the deep blue dial. I just love how the white gold is. It's super stealthy, but it still has that heavy weight and sheen, so it's brighter than stainless steel. And I love that it's in the ultra thin package because it'll fit my wrist amazingly well. So I hope later this year or sometime in the future, I'll be able to present it to you guys as well. Thank you so much for checking out this video today on my Grail watch. I'm sad that I don't get to spend more time with this piece, but I really hope to own this beautiful overseas one day. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel to see my latest reviews and watch content. Like this video if you're in love with this piece just like I am, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below on how the Vacheron Constantin stacks against the other luxury sports watches in the perpetual calendar range. It's been a minute and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.